There continues to be a steady stream of good questions around COVID that I thought I might just address individually. The first one around the use of masks. And while this is still controversial and some countries are recommending it, the routine wearing of masks in the community in Australia is not currently recommended, partly due to our excellent control and the very low numbers of cases, but also to make sure they're available for healthcare workers. So once again, much better to make sure you in, uh, adhere to social distancing and hand hygiene and perhaps leave the masks for healthcare workers. I'm also getting a lot of questions about immunity from COVID and the short answer really is that we don't know a lot about that yet. It's likely that most people get some kind of immunity from infection, but we don't know who that is, how to test for it or how long it lasts. So the concept of herd immunity from getting the illness or an immunity passport, for example, are ones that are fundamentally flawed. What we need to do is keep control of it and we're doing a great job of that right now and obviously wait for the vaccine, which hopefully isn't too far away. There's also a lot of questions about whether you can get reinfected with COVID and varying reports from different countries around that. It seems likely that reinfection is possible, although not common, and so not the main way that people are getting this. So we still need people to make sure, even if they're infected, that they do adhere to the right restrictions, but I wouldn't be too concerned that reinfection is going to be common. We've heard a number of reports around a number of miracle drugs or the so-called cure. And unfortunately, a lot of these have been reported quite irresponsibly from, uh, from medical people, academics, and uh, obviously other prominent figures in the media. I'd like to reinforce that at this stage, there are no evidence-based therapies for COVID, although there's a lot of clinical trials underway and we're participating in a number of those here at the MARTA to try and get that evidence to see what drugs are the best. But at this stage, there are no drugs recommended for the routine care of COVID patients. We've also seen a lot of misinformation spread about COVID and I think something that the community can do to uh, help with that is to make sure that you get your information from reputable sources. The state and federal government obviously is the best one and uh, maybe not pay too much attention to some of the other reports in the media, particularly around different cures or treatments, including things like uh, bleach or detergent as a good example. So maybe just stick to getting your information from reputable sources. I'm also getting a lot of questions about people with comorbidities or pre-existing conditions and unfortunately some of these do pose a slightly greater risk of more severe disease with COVID. But fortunately right now we've controlled this disease so well in this country that there are just so few cases that the majority of people don't need to be concerned. I'd recommend if you have a medical condition that you make sure that it's looked after well and your management is optimised as best as possible by maintaining your routine care with whoever's looking after that and, and make sure you keep up all the things that are going to prevent you getting infected, particularly social distancing and hand hygiene. In terms of the origin of this virus, there are a lot of rumours going around and the short answer is we don't know for sure the origin of this virus but it would seem most likely to have originated, like most of these viruses, through mutations and evolution within animals, as we know that uh, coronaviruses infect a large number of different animals and can cross over to humans when they get the right sort of mutations, as is likely in this case. I don't think there's any evidence at present to suggest it was man-made. In terms of the vaccine, we don't yet know how often it will need to be given or who best to give it to first. These are things that we'll work out once we have the vaccine available. It is likely to be one that does need repeated doses, perhaps every year, but again, too early to know just yet. And once available, we're not yet clear on exactly how it'll be first rolled out, but I do suspect it'll be in a risk-based way and perhaps healthcare workers or those that are most vulnerable might receive it first. But obviously our intention is to have a vaccine available to everybody that needs it as soon as possible. Some people are concerned about lasting effects following COVID infection and the main response to that is that majority of people infected with COVID-19 actually have a mild disease. So 80 to 85% of people infected will remain mild. There's only a small number of people that regress to more severe infection and given our numbers are so low in this country, that translates to very few people. So the prospect of lasting effects from COVID infection are very low. As we're learning more about COVID-19, we have come to associate more symptoms with this infection, the main new ones being a loss of sense of smell or anosmia. So these are now recognised symptoms of COVID-19. The main ones still are respiratory in nature, things like a cough, sore throat and shortness of breath and fevers, but we are continuing to track these symptoms carefully so that we make sure we don't miss anybody who's potentially infected. As reflected by our excellent numbers, that's very few numbers of new cases, it's really clear that if people do the right things, social distancing, hand hygiene, etc., then your chance of getting infected with COVID-19 is extremely low. And as we see those numbers continue to fall, obviously there's so few people that are infectious in our community that provided we keep doing all those things, the chance of getting COVID-19 in this state and this country is going to be exceptionally low. So basically keep up the good work.